So the idea is to put theory and practice together in the design cycle. Theory is good for expressing abstract specifications of the system at the level of individual components. For this part of the design cycle, namely specification of what we want to build, a theoretical framework called IO Automata is used and its syntax is very similar to C-like syntax. And so in terms of uh, writing the specification, it's very intuitive in how we go about using IO Automata to develop the system requirements and specify them using the syntax provided by IO Automata. And more importantly, the composition operator that's available in IO Automata allows expressing specification of an entire subsystem that we want to build. Example, if you want to build a TCP IP protocol stack, then all of the functional relationship between the components of the subsystem can be expressed using the powerful specification language primitives available in IO Automata. The second part of the design cycle is converting the specification in IO Automata to code that can be actually executed. And for this purpose, the programming language that is used is a high-level programming language called OCaml, stands for Object-Oriented Categorical Abstract Machine Language. And it has several properties that make OCaml a very good candidate for doing component-based design as we are proposing to do in this lesson. Number one, the formal semantics that is available in OCaml is a nice complement to the specification that we've done using IO Automata. That's number one reason why OCaml is a good vehicle for converting the specification into code. The second nice property that it has is it's object-oriented. Being an object-oriented la language, th it has some very nice properties such as no side effects for things that you do in the program. And in fact, this comes from the fact that OCaml is a functional programming language. So some of the properties of uh, the functional programming language, including no side effects and so on, make this an appropriate vehicle to convert the specification into code. And third, perhaps the most important uh, characteristic from an operating system designer's point of view is that the code that you can generate with OCaml is as efficient as C code. This is super important when you're developing operating systems because you care about performance. Object-oriented is good, formal semantics is good, but you also want to know, know that you get good performance out of it, and yes, you can get pretty good performance out of OCaml because the object code that we can generate from the OCaml compiler is very efficient, similar to C. All of these make OCaml a good vehicle for going from specification to actual code. At this point, what we have is an unoptimized code that faithfully implements the specification that we started out with. And remember that we're doing component-based design, so it's going to be highly unoptimized because there's a lot of craft that goes between these components that you put together like Lego blocks. So we have to optimize it before it is ready for prime time. Now, how do we do that? Well, once again, we turn to theory. New Perl is a theoretical framework for optimization of OCaml code. The input to this framework is the OCaml code, and the output that you get is an optimized version of a functionally equivalent OCaml code. So that's what this optimization framework gives you, takes as input unoptimized OCaml code and produces optimized OCaml code. And the optimized OCaml code can be theoretically verified to be functionally equivalent to the unoptimized input OCaml code. That's the beauty of this theoretical framework. And the way it does that is a little bit beyond the scope of this course. It uses a theorem-proving framework in order to do this and verify through theorem-proving that the resulting code that is generated is equivalent to the input code which was unoptimized. I've given you the big picture of the design cycle. Now it is time to go into the weeds. 